Hi guys, I'm Charlie. I do map design and I'm one of the co-producers of Echoes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hi, I'm uh, Paleo or Payo, however you want to say it. Uh, I'm the other co-producer, which is just like fancy title, but I uh, model and I do like art and the map and all that. Evelyn. Hi. Mev. Okay. Hi, I'm Mev. I'm the programmer. So I do all of the game stuff where everyone else does all like the modeling and texturing. Very nice. Hi, I'm Bavelli or Tigris, and um, I'm modeler and animator and the um, animation and design production manager. Okay, so the first question is uh, for people who aren't really familiar with like the setting of the game. Uh, people have been asking a lot, like, what time period or locations will animals be added from? Uh, basically, we're looking at a slice of time uh, that is preserved by the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles. And that is from, like, around, I think, 50,000 years ago to about 20,000 years ago. Uh, which is, like, the very, very latest uh, endpoint of the late Pleistocene. So... Uh, yeah, so I can't, I don't really want to like say animals because I don't want to like confirm anything, but like the last ice age. But the other question is: Is the map based solely on a real place, or are there made up elements? So my vision for the map was basically, I think. I don't think we took a height map, but we definitely took a map of the La Brea Tar Pits themselves and kind of built the map around that. Yeah, it was uh, um yeah, it was a map of the tar pits and then uh oh it was, it was a while ago, but I think we just like built a bowl around yeah, it. Yeah, so we built a the map is like a basin to kind of reflect the Los Angeles basin, which is like where all the sediment collected from the Santa Monica Mountains into the basin below, which covered the tar pits and preserved everything so perfectly so we like modified the tar pits to how they would look at the time they were active and not just like open excavation pits yeah so yeah very hard though because the whole city is under like 10 feet of concrete now to get an idea what it should look like yeah but we have like <laughs> an idea like we know that they were surrounded by woodland and all that yeah not like they are today Okay. Didn't care. Move on. Um, Mev, any features you want to discuss? All right. So the next question on the list was, will there be a grouping feature? So it's coming back from Cenozoic Survival, and we've got some other additions planned for it, but I don't really want to go into detail for those yet. Yeah. And I, I feel like you also um, were the main driving factor behind gameplay choices so i yeah. feel like you should do the that yeah, question I'll, too yeah i'll go ahead and do those so the next question is how will gameplay differ from cenozoic survival and then i'll, I'll go ahead and do the next one too because it's sort of hand in hand and it's how big of an impact are ai animals plan to have so for when i was thinking about how i wanted to make echoes different from cs one of the things i really focused on was how can i make it more interesting to play than just like running around as your favorite animals and fighting. So I really wanted to have features that can make the game more replayable. And one of the things I think is really important is to have AI to be able to interact with. And so you're not relying on players all the time. So of course, multiplayer is still an important part because you've got a role play and you want to have like a uh, competition with other players. But one of the things I really wanted was to be able to have some fun just playing the game on its own. And then the players sort of just add to that. Let's see, the next one is will le uh, meat and limb tearing be added? So meat tearing is coming back from CS, but we're not having limb tearing this time because of the way our models are set up. We can't separate the models easily. So we can't do the same sort of meat tearing or limb tearing thing we had in CS this time around. Then the next one is, will corpses becoming inaccessible in water be combated? And so this time, 
we've got corpses when they drop they'll float in water and you can push them to shore and if they they float around too long they'll sink but it's usually plenty of time to push it to shore and then also if you're trying to eat corpses that are in water it always prioritizes prioritizes the corpse even if it's underwater so you can eat corpses that are underwater as long as you're not swimming yeah i know a lot of people really who don't like uh when prey animals jump into water when they know they're about to die yeah mm-hmm. that's pretty useless now in all honesty uh next question will there be in-game rules so what is the answer to that? Well, I, I'm pretty sure it's no, right? Well, the only I mean, rules really are just no exploiting and no harassing yep. other people. Yeah, yeah. besides the obvious. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything beyond like the Roblox terms of service. Yeah, I mean, outside so, yeah. of that, yeah, outside of that is just do whatever you want in the game. It's a sandbox for a reason. Yeah, and people who don't really like not having no rules, we will have like an official realism server for people who want more like structure to the gameplay so there's that option too yeah that that too um you'll have the ability to uh (laughs) we've been working on that with our moderators they've been putting together an official realism so that should be cool yeah um anyways ooh, will there be pouncing and latching that's a good one Uh, i think that's a yeah I think you have the best. So I think if if ever anyone saw the trailer, then you'd know that latching's coming back because it was in the one shot. But we also want to have pouncing for Smilodon, which I don't want to go into too much detail to. But basically, it would let you grab other animals, something similar to the wolf, but also a little different. Um, I think that one of the main elements also around that was um. Smilodon would be able to take on like larger animals like the bison much easier, but it's sort of a a skill ceiling where you can just go in and play as the wolf, but the Smilodon you actually need to learn how to use more. Yeah, so we wanted to make wolf more like pick up and play, and our goal with Smilodon is to give it more of like a a learning curve, so there's like stuff to actually learn that you can actually master. Yeah. Um, will there be a combat system for the same species? Yeah, so, um, that's another part of the grouping system is, uh, there will be, um, there will be same species combat. Um, I think there, um, this is totally optional. So if you want to just have a friend group, you can leave it at that, but, uh, for more like public groups in servers, there will be roles, sort of, and you can work your way up or down the hierarchy on if you can, if you uh, are good at uh, sparring or not. Um, it's basically, I don't know if we want to talk about how it actually works. What do you guys think? I think that'll probably end up coming down to like gameplay. Like it'll probably change as we work on it. Yeah. Um, but know that. Uh, That'll actually be something that we're working on. Um, but yeah, we uh, it probably won't be when the game first comes out, but it'll definitely be a very soon feature. Will any species be purchased with Robux or tracks? Um, I I think I think in terms of that element there are a few animals that we want to add on later but we want to definitely fill out the base the base roster of animals um fully so you don't really feel like you're missing out if you don't have robux but i think we discussed that most of the um animals that you could get with robux would also be like something you could grind for for tracks you know um, I believe that was a thing we were discussing, but no, most most animals are um, actually gonna be things that you just do little missions for to unlock. 
Are there any new features that we might see that aren't in Cenozoic Survival? Um, I guess I can answer that. I guess the biggest one is going to be AI. We're going to be focusing a lot on AI and what it can add to a game that PvP alone cannot offer. So I think that's going to be like the biggest game changer for this game. Anyone and my wants question... to elaborate on that? Um, AI for real. It's it's crazy how much it's changed the um, the layout of how the game plays. Because um, before, if there aren't players in certain parts of the map, it's just you know you're kind of by yourself but with echoes we've been running around and there's certain spots where you'll scare up like clusters of rabbits and pronghorns and they're just running everywhere it makes it like so much more ambient and so i've seen a lot of people asking about the uh in-game currency system and like how you will get the tracks so we're gonna have a sort of task system uh where you do activities that just depend on what animal you are and just give you tracks and then you'll get uh like different different activities that the animal would do in real life so just to keep you uh active instead of just sitting in one spot waiting for tracks so for herbivores there's going to be migration events where certain areas of the map will become like hot spots where you can just stay in them to get tracks, but you have to travel there to get them. And then those will just change every once in a while. And it'll be species dependent. So everyone of a certain species will have the same migration area. So all the uh, players of one species will travel to one spot to get tracks. Since this is a new game, we aren't going to be transferring um, game passes. Instead of having like packs, we're going to have individually purchased things, but Cenozoic Survival will remain open, so you won't lose anything. You'll have your game passes in that game, but in the new game, there will be new content. Um, however, for um, people who purchase the Feliforms Pass in Cenozoic, since we didn't really get to give you guys a lot of content for that, we will be compensating in a way that is to be um, We'll reveal, we'll reveal later how we compensate. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so Felforms moves over um, everything else. Since it's still in Seno, it's, you know, it's there. You can still use it. Yeah. You'll still have it. You, are, you aren't losing anything. Um, I would like to reveal, though, that the Dire Wolf will get a Melanistic and a Leucistic Pass. But, again, these will be two separate game passes. Um, but those will be their game pass skins. Um, will there be bone break? It was just a no. No. <laughs> bone no. Break. So yeah. the idea reasoning behind why we are removing bone break is because there's a couple reasons. There's one, there's like a logistical reason that it's like one less animation you we have to make. So not even one, it's, just, it's like three. Yeah, so it's just less animations for us. Also, for gameplay, it doesn't really um do much it's just kind of annoying and not very fun for the player to just like wait around and wait for a thing to heal so like if you fall off a cliff instead of breaking your leg you'll just take fall damage and i think yeah. the fall damage is more forgiving anyway so you're not breaking or you're not dying by just it's like still over a pebble yeah it still it still encourages you to be careful about your surroundings but since we're working in a very flat area, there's not a whole lot of areas where you can really hurt yourself anyway, unless you're doing something that's not intelligent, you know? Mm -hmm. So For one like, of the questions we've, we'll we've been getting a lot, sorry, um, one of the questions we've been getting a lot is will you add this animal or that animal? Um, and the answer to that is simply just, we aren't confirming what's on the roster so far. Um, just the four right now. We do have more planned, but we won't be revealing them until later. Yeah, we do. Um, we do actually have every animal we want in the game planned already. So we have the entire roster set. It's just that it's more fun to mess with you guys, to be honest. You know, like, ooh, I mean, yeah. ooh, what's what's nice coming next? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and... Like, honestly, surprise. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention something earlier. Yeah. So um, when I was talking about the game passes, I mentioned that the Wolf and Saber will have, will have their game pass skins um, in release. Um, the horse does have game pass skins planned, but they won't be coming until later. Yeah. And they are surprised. Um, so people were asking if we were going to have different weather in the game, like we did in Seno. Um, so since we're actually working with a real location now, it allows us to go more in depth onto certain things. And I am happy to say that there is actually a yearly cycle that the map goes through. So there's actually seasons. Um, the main difference is um, La Brea during the time period the game takes place. Um, there was a wet season during the uh, winter and spring and then a dry season during the summer and fall. Uh, so really during the wet season, it's going to be raining a lot. Uh, all the food's going to be very plentiful. There will be um, water will be very plentiful. But during the uh, dry season, um, non-permanent bodies of water, so the only permanent bodies of water on the map will be rivers. Everything else will actually be um, depletable, so you'll actually be able to fully consume all the water on the map aside from the rivers. Um, all the food, by the way, um, a lot of people have pointed out uh, that there were bald patches of grass in the trailer that's um so even the grass is depletable so it'll definitely be a sort of pushing herbivore players around and obviously the herbivore players follow the uh carnivore players or i mean other way around the carnivores follow the herbivores so it won't just be stagnant gameplay it'll go between a time of plenty where you can do um where you can just kind of chill with friends for a few hours to a time of basically being like constantly on the move and exploring the map during the dry season. So it'll 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 go back and forth um, to really spice things up. And in terms of natural disasters, um, the main thing is really just uh, during the beginning of the wet season, there will be a, a thunderstorm. And but then it just goes to light rains for the rest of the wet season, you know. But yeah, there'll be um do we have a whole yearly cycle in the game and the environment's constantly changing. And I I've all I really wanted to talk about that, so I'm excited for people to be able to explore the map with that, you know. Um, okay, this next one. Okay, we should get into this next one. Um who wants to take that one? Yeah. Okay, so this next question is will there, will there be growth? Um no. Sorry. <laughs> There's not going to be any growth. No babies. We're working on fully fleshing out the existing animals so that we can fully put our focus into making sure that the, that they're the best that they can be. Um so no babies, but really really working hard on those on those animals. Yeah. If you guys want to add anything. So basically it means no growth no growth for the animals in game but with that means that every animal we can every animal that we do add is going to be way more complex and have way more things you can do gameplay wise um so it's really just we sacrifice the growth mechanic for making the game more fun like for a more varied species you know yeah. um it's really just so we could work on making the adults as fun as possible. Um, the next question is that, um, will we be reusing any assets, models, animations, whatever from Xenozoic Survival? Um, the answer is no. Everything we're making is from scratch. It's all new. Because we want to really elevate what we can do, uh, elevate our style. So nothing reused. Every single thing is new. Um, this one isn't on the list, but somebody just asked asked it. Um, would you guys mind if I cut in for a second out of order? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, somebody asked if the food dome was coming back. Uh, yeah, that was that is such a good idea. Um, I really wish other animal games would implement the uh, 
the food dome to protect, uh, you know, animals eating. Because I just, I, I really think that was a very genius move on our part, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it's staying. Uh, will there be a den building feature? Who wants to get into that one? Um, I guess I can. Yeah. Uh, so for Direwolf, uh, you will be able to excavate a den. It won't be like digging into the terrain itself. It'll be like building up like a, a an entrance that you enter into a den. And yeah. the den will have multiple purposes. Uh, I don't know if I can get into them uh you know maybe maybe let them maybe let them speculate a bit yeah yeah go on all right let me look um will the game be released for early access and will it oh well i mean we all we all already say we don't give out release dates but i think we should change it to will it be released for early access it was it was just so that we can say no, we aren't giving any dates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh will there be a way to prevent mix packing or cosing? Cosing. Uh Matt, so, I think that oh sorry. Do you want me to do you No, I was saying I think that really exemplifies a lot of what you've been working on recently, so I was saying you should really go into that one i'm not going to go into huge detail because it's still kind of getting worked out but the the stress system in cs is not returning not like there'll probably be a stress mechanic in echoes but it won't be the same as it was in cinezoic survival just because like the blur mechanic was kind of annoying and it didn't really even work yeah um in terms of the ways to prevent co-saying do you want to elaborate maybe on things that were in the trailer uh no. Hmm. All right. Will there be different habitats? Um yeah, there there will be uh well, let me pull up my memory is bad. Oh, you're pulling up the uh one second. Uh so there will be different habitats across the map that are preferable to certain species. There are there will be five different habitats based on like the real World location. There will be the Oak Parkland, the Sage Chaparral Scrub, um, the Pine Juniper Woodland, the Hillside Prairie, and the Riparian Woodland. So basically, different uh, habitats will have have different like resources that are preferable to certain species. So like. If you're a horse, you want to be in the prairie because that's where all the grass is, and horses are really good at munching on grass. Or if you're like a bison, you want to be in the like scrubland or woodland because that's where like all the oaks and shrubs are that bison like to eat. Yeah. Also, um, the the sage chaparral scrub has a lot of like cover for predators, like lots of thickets and like bushy areas for predators to hide in. So that's more preferable to hunt in than say like the prairie, where it's just mainly grass and uh, much fewer shrubs. Uh, yeah, that's that's not to say um you'll still be able to explore the whole map as whatever animal you choose. There's nothing to yeah. stop players from going where they please, you know. Um, will there be, okay, okay, Mev, this one, um, I think is a, uh, you question. Okay. So the next one is, will it be private servers for echoes and will they include commands? So the answer, short answer is yes. So private server owners will have access to some of the commands that, uh, admins have in public servers, but only in their own private servers for like moderation mostly. So I know yeah. a lot of realism servers and other sort of community servers will benefit from that. Um, okay. Oh, wait. I know this yeah. is on the list, but I want to talk about the tar pits real quick. Oh, yes. I uh, That is, yeah, we should so, definitely talk about that. So, yeah, 
the the La Brea tar pits, right? So yeah, there's gonna be tar pits, and how they will work is, um, so I, they're pretty. Most of them, the big ones, they're pretty noticeable. So you're not just gonna like walk right into them. So like, what incentive do you have to go to them? So what we are doing is we're making it so corpses of large, uh, animals will like spawn in the tar pits. So like, if you want an easy meal. You can just go to the tar pits and you can risk like eating from a carcass that has spawned in the tar pit with like the risk that you might get stuck and just die. So there's that incentive to go to the tar pits. Yeah. Um so will there be uh a paid access plan? Uh or like how um, we plan to release the game. Once I go into that, I guess I can. Charlie, you go ahead. Okay, so the end goal for the game is it will be free. Um, the game we plan for the game to be a free, like thing you can just hop into. But um, once we feel the game is at a state where it is playable, before we feel it is fully finished, we will open up a paid access period and um there are certain elements of that uh bab do we want to get into those certain elements you mean like the features that are in it or i was gonna um certain things you specifically have been working on um i am confused i'm asking if you want to talk oh, right about okay that. sorry yeah. So um so yeah, so we will have a paid access at first. Um, but we actually want to reward people further who paid for paid access by giving them an exclusive direwolf skin. So if you play the game during paid access, you will have access to a free skin. And once paid access is over, it's not nobody can get it. So everyone who has paid access gets a free skin and I may reveal the skin right. soonish soonish yeah so um outside of that there are specific features that we have pushed to working on during paid access um so know that when the paid access period comes that's when we feel the game is playable but there's specific features that we want before the game is actually free to play mm -hmm. yeah so I've seen a lot of people asking about if there'll be an in-game map, and the short answer is yes. So there'll be a mini game or a mini map in the corner, and you'll be able to expand it to view the whole map at once and see certain landmarks. So I don't know how many of you have played Amazon Ascension, but it'll work very similar to how it works in that. And you will be able to toggle it for people that prefer to play without a mini map. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's really best of both worlds here. Um, do we want to go over how the scent system works? Oh, I actually, um, so we will definitely do a video regarding scent soon, but we did overhaul the entire scent system essentially. Um, do we want to talk about certain big changes to it, Mev, or should we wait for the video for that? Yeah, I'll go into like basic details. So basically, there's a wind direction now. So that affects which direction you can see scent from. And it also allows us to like be a little more realistic with the scent, because previously, it would like hide your scent when you crouched, just so you could actually sneak up on stuff. But we don't need that anymore, since we have wind direction. So now you actually have to pay attention to the wind to know yeah. if you can sneak up on things. Yeah, this does... Um... Outside of that, it also means that when you're playing as an herbivore, if you know that there's predators in a certain area, um, it would be best to go with the direction of the wind when you're walking, when you're leaving that area so that they won't be able to track you, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that also... That also means that if you're going towards wind, people will be able to track you from a very long distance. So it really adds another level of evasion uh, from predators and stuff as an herbivore. Um, so another question was, will there be more skins added? 
So the short answer is yes, we do plan to have more skins in the future. Um, there'll be a surprise, but we'll, we'll probably like release, I mean, preview them before we release them. But we do have more, more skins planned for every playable. Um, oh boy, I'm seeing a lot of people talk about the poop system. Oh yeah, do you want to say what the use of the poop is? The, the poop really is just, it's part of scent. It's, um, it's, um, it does have another use, but the main thing is, it's just to sig to let people know that a herd or a group of animals has been through an area. So if they want to, they can start tracking them. Yeah, it's like um, basically it's something to be like, oh, I should turn my scent on now because there's someone, something was here. Yeah. Um, do we want to talk about the secondary purpose or should we I leave that we as a mystery? Okay. No, no, no. I don't um, know. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so before we do this, um, there is going to. We're not doing oxygen again since there's so little water on the map. Um, you just won't drown in the game. Instead, we're replacing it with a cleanliness system. And so what cleanliness does is it will allow you to heal faster when you're clean. And to clean yourself, you actually we have designated wallows around the map. Yep. And so, yes, you will be able to uh, wallow around the map as every animal. And with that comes dung, which predators will be able to hide their scent by wallowing in herbivore dung. And this is based and, in reality, just so you know. Dogs do this. Yeah, this is this is a thing that canines do in the wild. They uh, will disguise themselves as elk. So, um, like in Yellowstone, uh, gray wolves will actually disguise themselves as elk by wallowing in elk dung. So yep. when an elk smells them, it's like, oh, there's another elk in the area. Uh, so you will be able to disguise your scent as herbivore scent when you're playing as a predator by wallowing in the dung of that herbivore. I believe big cats do it too. Yes, yeah, some big cats do it too, so we're also giving it to Smile Dumb. Very cool, and that's what poop is. You roll in it. Yeah. <laughs> What's for? <laughs> uh, what is optimate optimization going to be like? Will it be less laggy? Um, yeah. I feel like I can confidently say the game will be much better optimized than Cenozoic Survival. Uh, yeah. The models are like, how would I describe it? Like industry standard, like rigged, uh, good topology, low, pretty low poly, uh, as well as like the plants and the render distance. So I think the game runs very well on PC and also runs pretty well on mobile. Because I believe our uh, staff has been playing on mobile pretty frequently. So I, I believe the game is well optimized. Yeah. Uh, will all animals be free? Uh, we answered this at the beginning of the Q&A. Uh, all the majority of the roster will be free. Uh, besides a couple Game Pass animals that we are not sharing yet. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, and now it's just looking through because there are a lot of questions. Let's see if there's anything specific we want to answer. Is it possible to be born with a disability on your animal? <laughs> missing limb, eye, ear. Uh no. <laughs> oh no. There won't be there won't be like um like in how Cenozoic Survival, there was like random variation, like you might spawn with different antlers. Uh, this game will not have that. Your yeah. appearance will be de determined by your skin, which you can purchase and select yourself. There'll be a random button. Yeah, yeah. and that's a random skin you, button. If you, really will, if you really want that, there'll be a random button. But between the skins you have purchased. Um... Will there be scratching? That's a 
strangely specific question. Um, I, could... I guess that's just like, like with the attack, like the click attack, I guess. I think they mean like scratching yourself on objects, which um, I believe is one of the quests uh, for tracks. Yep. So you'll occasionally as a bison or a horse be like, hey, you're itchy. Go find a rock. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then you can scratch your little booty on the rock. We really have been focusing a lot on survival elements for Echoes to make things more realistic and for a back of a, uh, for a lack of a better word, just make things more educational on how animals really do interact with the environment. But another thing that we're focusing on is we want to make the game very fun for role players. So, um, sir. Herb, I think the best way to put it is herbivores will be able to create props by picking plants and carry stuff around, as well as like how the carnivores can carry their uh, meat and stuff. In terms of encouraging players to move from spot to spot rather than hunkering down, Mev did touch on migration earlier, which um, is going to be a very profitable thing you can do. So um, really, you'd you'd have to just not want to do it to avoid <laughs> um sorry um so there will be migration which will earn you tracks for moving around the map uh but there will also be um foliage is actually consumable in terms of grass um you it was it was actually in the trailer a lot of people missed this but uh, the horses were actually grazing down the grass in the trailer and it makes it to where you can't feed from that area when there's no grass there. So that'll definitely push herbivores around a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, will there be established landmarks? That's um I will say we've been developing the map to where there's lots of areas where you can really look and be like, oh, that is a cool spot. Um, I think that's one of the most fun things about uh, map making is making really interesting areas. Um, this really goes into questions uh, that were asked earlier, uh, but the map in itself, it's not a direct one for one re uh, recreation of what La Brea would have looked like. It's more um, simplified into how we feel a game would do well while also lifting elements but there are certain areas that are based off of real places ar around that region like um the tar pits for example they are pretty close to how the tar pits are in la brea right now um but there are like there's a few like caves and rock formations that you can look and be like oh that's based off a real place you know Oh, this isn't really a development question, but I think this is an interesting one. What other ideas um, did, what other areas did we think of before actually settling on La Brea? Um, I think this I think is just we'll... more of a, I think this is just more of a fun SciComm question. Yeah, um, from what I remember, I think, I feel like no Bra La Brea was like a no-brainer for us because we all knew about it and we were very interested in it. We dabbled with a couple other places in North America just because we wanted like alligators and terror birds so we kind of dabbled with the idea of either Texas or Florida first but I think um, we settled on La Brea just because it's the most iconic yeah it was, it was really funny we um I think for like half a minute we were talking about Sonora and then we had an oh wait moment when we realized that um Sonora is already a game and we're friends with the people who work on that game yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I think we also talked about the, uh, Appalachias for a hot minute. Cause we were thinking about the gray fossil site, but That's right, that, yeah. yeah. Well, here's one that I was going to mention, uh, will there be stat differences between male and female animals? So there will be where it's necessary. 
So like uh, animals that have sexual dimorphism right now is just the bison. Um, the females are like almost like uh, two thirds the size of the male. So they'll have like less health and probably less attack, but they will be uh, faster to compensate. It is it is quite comical. Um, the male bison in the male Bocentiquus, it looks it's it's a strange looking animal, to put it lightly. But the female just looks like a normal bison, you know? Yeah. It's 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 very funny. The uh, male is this big hulking Dorito, basically. And then the female is just a normal looking, normal sized bison. And that's how their dimorphism was in reality. We know this from fossils. It's it's very strange. Oh, so will there be a way to tell if an animal is low on health? So if you're tracking them and you see their scent, the scent now it tells you what their uh, health status is. So I think there's like uh, three or four different health statuses. They can be like, uh, so you can see, get an approximation of how low your target is. Yeah. So how do Pecri AI defend themselves? Um, so the Platygonus or the flat-headed Pecri is pretty large. It's it's lighter than a direwolf, but it's about as tall as one. So and they travel in uh, packs. Uh, not sure how big they'll be. Probably around like five to ten, or maybe on that number, yeah, five to ten. Uh, and they can be pretty aggressive. Uh, they will depending on how many direwolves are approaching a pack of peccaries, uh, it will determine if the peccaries either attack or flee. So if it's only like one direwolf and it's like five peccaries, the peccaries will start like, uh, like clacking their jaw together, which the peccaries do in life, uh, before they like run after you and attack you. But if it's like a Smilodon, Approaching like a couple peccaries, the peccaries will just automatically flee, and you'll have to just chase them. Yeah, but they will be roaming around the map. And I, I'd like to emphasize again, peccaries, they will give you a small bit of warning with the jaw clacking, but they're not like where you have to provoke them. These are aggressive animals that if you do not scare them, they will attempt to kill you, and so it will. It will be an experience when you accidentally come across a herd of them. Or direwolf, at least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody asked if there's going to be events based on holidays. Um, we actually will be doing certain holiday skins for animals. Um, I'm not going to reveal what they will be, but we will likely have holiday skins that you can purchase um, during a set time, like during that holiday. Um, and it'll be like you'll be able to use it all year round, but you'll only you only be able to get it during that period. So stay yeah. tuned for that. Yeah, so it's um really just a fun little work towards this thing. But yeah, on on that on that topic, I believe we uh have covered everything that we really want to talk about. So um thanks for tuning in, guys. We've been the Echoes team. Uh Oh wow, sure that have. number <laughs> we have that number going down, the audience. Yep. Um anyway, any final things you guys wanna note before or I um anyway. I yeah, I have I have recorded this. I want to edit it in some fashion, but um it will be on the YouTube at some point, uh, for you guys to go back to. Um and with that, on that note, uh, thank you guys for joining. Yeah, thank you guys thank you for the questions. And if we did not get to your question, it's only because we don't want to answer certain things right now. But thank you. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.